When dolphins leap out of the water and come diving back down in a splash, it's an incredible sight and one you'd want to take your kids to see. But when an airplane makes like a porpoise and bounces down part of the runway on landing, you don't ever want to see it. Porpoising, or jumping and diving uncontrollably, is a dangerous result of a faulty landing and if not recovered from, can cause damage to your nose gear or propeller or worse. Why does it happen? And what can we do to prevent it? To explain, let's start by looking at how the aircraft balances both in flight and on the ground. The center of gravity, or CG, is the point through which all the weight on the aircraft can be said to move through. The weight in front of the CG equals the weight behind it. It's the balance point of the balance beam. Because of this, when we're in the air, pitching up and down causes us to rotate around this point. The CG doesn't move, though everything else on the aircraft is pitching up and down. Now let's think about what happens when the aircraft is sitting on the ground. The CG is still there and is still the balance point as far as weight is concerned, but since the wheels are touching the surface, we won't rotate about the CG, but about the main wheels. Notice the CG bobbing up and down now. When the aircraft is touching the ground, it has to rotate along whatever wheel is making contact with the ground, whether it's the main gear or the nose wheel, not around the CG. Keep that in mind as we look at a landing. Here, we're approaching for landing and we're going to bounce this landing, either because we're rounding out too late and have too fast a descent rate, or we're coming in too fast, or a combination of those. We touch down flat, basically with both the main gear and nose wheel at the same time, and the aircraft drifts back up into the air a bit. From this point, we have to make a decision on how to react. The ground is below us, and that's where we want to go, so we may react by pushing the control forward or even just letting up on the back pressure we already had on the stick. This causes the nose to dive down a bit. Yes, we're going back towards the runway we need to get to, but without a round out again, the aircraft will touch down nose wheel first. Look where the center of gravity is. It's behind the nose wheel. The aircraft will flop down hard on the mains, pushing the tail down. This has the effect of increasing the wing's angle of attack, and if we have any excess speed at all, it will cause us to generate more lift and sail back in the air. So we've bounced twice now. If we double down on the strategy to point the nose at the ground, we'll once again hit nose wheel first, although now we have an even more violent tail down action that bounces us even higher. After about three or four of these bounces, it becomes unrecoverable and the nose wheel can collapse. After all, it's not designed to absorb the loads from landing that the main gear are. So here it is again. Each impact on the nose gear causes a more and more violent tail down action because of where the CG is developing into a very difficult to recover from porpoise. Here's a better plan. In any bounce landing, the best procedure is to go full power and execute a go around. But to recover from a mild initial bounce, resist the urge to dive for the runway, and instead, redo your round out procedure. Bringing in a slowly increasing amount of back pressure when close to the ground again to ease into a nice landing on the main gear first. Think of a mild bounce or a float as a second chance at a landing. Maybe you got a bit too aggressive on the first try, so don't try to salvage that first try. Start over. Let the aircraft get back down nice and close to the runway and do a nice slow round out. Never dive the aircraft back down towards the ground. It won't land until it's ready, no matter how much you want it to.